The Ancient City, Book 3, Chapter 7, The Religion of the City. 2. The Festivals and the Calendar. In all ages and in all societies, man has desired to honor his gods by festivals. He has established that there should be days during which the religious sentiment should reign in his soul, without being distracted by terrestrial thoughts and labors. In the number of days that he has to live, he has devoted a part to the gods. Every city had been founded with rites which, in the thoughts of the ancients, had had the effect of establishing the national gods within its walls. It was necessary that the virtue of these rites should be rejuvenated each year by a new religious ceremony. This festival they called the birthday, and all the citizens were required to celebrate it. Whatever was sacred gave occasion for a festival. There was the festival of the city enclosure, Amberbalia, and that of the territorial limits, Ambarvalia. On those days, the citizens formed a grand procession, clad in white and crowned with leaves. They made the circuit of the city, or territory, chanting prayers. At the head walked priests, leading victims, which they sacrificed at the close of the ceremony. Afterwards came the festival of the founder. Then each of the heroes of the city, each of those souls that men invoked as protectors, claimed a worship. Romulus had his, and Servius Tullius, and many others, even to the nurse of Romulus and Evander's mother. In the same way, Athens had the festival of Cecrops, that of Erechtheus, that of Theseus, and it celebrated each of the heroes of the country, the guardian of Theseus, and Eurystheus, and Androgeus, and a multitude of others. There were also the rural festivals, those for plowing, seed time, and the time for flowering, and that for the vintage. In Greece, as in Italy, every act of the husbandman's life was accompanied with sacrifices, and men performed their work reciting sacred hymns. At Rome, the priests fixed, every year, the day on which the vintage was to commence, and the day on which the new wine might be drunk. Everything was regulated by religion. A religious ordinance required the vines to be pruned, for it told man that it would be impious to offer a libation with the wine of an unpruned vine. Every city had a festival for each of the divinities which it had adopted as a protector, and it often counted many of them. When the worship of a new divinity was introduced into the city, it was necessary to find a new day in the year to consecrate to him. What characterized the religious festivals was the interdiction of labor, the obligation to be joyous, the songs, the public games. The Athenian religion added, take care to do each other no wrong on those days. The calendar was nothing more than the order of the religious festivals. It was regulated, therefore, by the priests. At Rome, it was long before the calendar was reduced to writing. The first day of the month, the pontiff, after having offered a sacrifice, convoked the people and named the festivals that would take place in the course of the month. This convocation was called the Calatio, whence came the name of Calends, which was given to this day. The calendar was regulated neither on the course of the moon nor on the apparent course of the sun. It was governed solely by the laws of religion, mysterious laws which the priests alone knew. Sometimes religion required that the year should be shortened, and at other times that it should be lengthened. We can form an idea of primitive calendars if we recollect that among the Albans the month of May had twelve days, and that March had thirty-six. We can see that the calendar of one city would in no wise resemble that of another, since the religion was not the same in both, and the festivals as well as the gods were different. The year had not the same length from one city to another. The months did not bear the same names. At Athens they had quite other names than at Thebes, and at Rome they had not the same names as at Lavinium. This was due to the fact that the name of each month was derived, ordinarily, from the principal festival it contained, and the festivals were not the same. Different cities had no understanding to commence the year at the same time, or to count the series of their years from the same date. In Greece, the Olympic festival afforded, in the course of time, a common date, but this did not prevent each city from having its own particular style of reckoning. In Italy, every city counted its years from the day of its foundation.